Excuse the wires. Alrighty. Okay. Take a seat. Did you find what you were looking for? This is a great looking shoe, but sadly these types of things are not in the budget. Well, unfortunately, even if you had the money, this shoe can no longer be purchased. Uh, the last time it was produced was in 1999, and they no longer make it. So it's, um, it's funny how 1999 can really kind of be considered vintage in the shoe world, 25, you know, 24 years, 25 years. So a quarter of a century, yeah, probably would be considered vintage. So, yeah, these were expensive, though. All right. Welcome, everybody, to the Elegant Oxford weekly live stream here on YouTube. I am supremely excited for today's live stream. I'm actually filming a normal review series for these, but I decided to do a live stream as well for them. Um, if you've watched my channel before, you'll know that I've been looking for this particular shoe for a very, very long time. Over five to six years. Um, I'm, I collect vintage shoes, and I look around for vintage shoes that I really, really like. And I usually buy them because they're out of production, and I really like them, and I do like the construction quality of these old shoes. Um, but the Johnson & Murphy Handmade 100s line is incredibly rare. It is so rare, I have never even seen one for sale on eBay before. Uh, people do snatch them up, they're very lucky they find them here and there, but I had never even seen a pair ever on eBay for me to even buy. I got even luckier, not only did I find a pair, but they've never been worn. So they're new, old stock, NOS, and in the community we call it NOS, so they're, they're NOS, not ever worn. So I'm just really, really excited to show these off today. Uh, I've been looking for this shoe for a very, very long time. So, um, for those who don't know, Johnson & Murphy was the original president's shoe. So Allen Edmonds are considered the president's shoe in the United States now because five U.S. presidents have been inaugurated wearing the Park Avenue Oxford. But before Allen Edmonds started in the 1800s, a very famous U.S. president wore Johnson & Murphy, and that would be Abraham Lincoln. So, ever since then, Johnson & Murphy had been known as the president's shoe before Allen Edmonds kind of took that over. Unfortunately, by 1999, 2000, Johnson & Murphy had sold off all of their American production uh, factories and moved everything overseas, and we saw a complete nosedive in quality. And that was the beginning of the end for Johnson & Murphy. Today, they focus on very low-end shoes. I don't even think they sell one Goodyear welted shoe. Everything is very quick. Sneakers, they're more like Cole Haan now, even though, you know, they do have that history behind them. Unfortunately, Johnson & Murphy no longer operates like they used to, so it kind of sucks. Um, you know, this was not Johnson & Murphy's fault, though. Uh, in the early 90s, companies did start moving production overseas, and we started seeing a huge drop in quality. Uh, I think the first big brand that closed its doors was Hanover, and I think they're in Pennsylvania, and every other company started following suit. The only companies that stayed true throughout that time were Alden and Allen Edmonds, and even then, I, I don't know if they're really... They, they don't compare at all to what you could get from the 1920s until like the 1990s from U.S. shoemakers who made some of the absolute best shoes on planet Earth. I have another example here. Let me just grab it here on my shelf. Really quickly, you can see. All right. I didn't think to grab it right now. But here's another really popular shoe that vintage shoe collectors often go for. This is the Florsheim Imperial. Florsheim was another really famous brand that no longer produces great shoes. Here's an example of that. This is a long wing in color four shell cordovan, which is kind of a lighter red color. Color four is very rare. Um, even today, there are some companies that produce it, but for the most part, it's one of those colors that you can't find as often anymore. Um, and these shoes were just amazing. They had the metal V-cleat. 
uh, over 50 nails per shoe. This is just an incredibly well-made shoe. And unfortunately, Florsheim also moved production overseas, so they no longer make anything like this. So this is probably the most common vintage shoe you can find on eBay. Type in Florsheim Imperial, it is the shoe you're gonna find. And there are thousands, yeah, probably thousands of, of, of Imperials online you can buy. And they're very, very popular. And then there are some more rare models. I would say Johnson & Murphy is probably the most rare to find these old vintage shoes. They just don't find them anymore. And if you do, they're quite expensive. So a pair of Johnson & Murphys that are vintage and made of shell cordovan will cost you a lot of money. Where Florsheim, you know, you can get them from 300 to 500 which is probably normal for shell cordovan. Philip, I believe Melton from J&M. Oh, yeah. Okay, so the Melton, I just looked up online, and it says sold out. So I don't know if they're actually selling it anymore, or that's pretty much it. I do remember the Melton, though. Oh, you know, the Melton was the cap to Oxford. You're 100% you're right. Uh, it was the wingtip that they sold up to, like, a year ago that said Crown Aristocrat in the sole that they no longer make either. They do, yeah. You're completely right, though. The Melton I did see online. Uh, it's their cap to Oxford in brown, I think. So, yeah, good good insight. Mario, very cool. Okay, so thanks, Mario. I, uh, I acquired these through the Allen Edmonds Enthusiast Club, uh, the group on Facebook. If you're not a member, please join. We're on there, and we love it. Um, and a, a, a member of the group was just really lucky and found them on a Goodwill uh, bid. It was a Goodwill bid. So Goodwill does bids like eBay, but they're just bids and he found this pair. So we got really, really lucky. Okay. So that's how I got them. And I contacted him and I said, I will buy them. Name your price. I'm happy to get them. You know, I, I've been looking for this shoe for a very long time. Any sh advice for shoes with a high instep? Carl, um, for shoes with, so you have a high instep? Um, what companies make shoes with a high end set? Carmina, for sure. Their, uh, their rain last has, is built more for a high end step. Didn't work for me because I have more of a flat foot. So I'd, I'd say Carmina, uh, Mirror Min, probably. It just depends. Yeah, ankles are huge. You're gonna have to look around, unfortunately, uh, and, and try out different shoes that work for you. Okay, so I'm going to open these shoes, I promise. Uh, before we do, if you've ever been on vcleat.com, it's V-C-L-E-A-T.com, vcleat. The owner is a shoe historian, and he collects catalogs and documents shoes that are no longer made. So um, vcleat actually has, I know this is so funny, you can see the, the phone I'm using to see your, your comments. vcleat has the original... Um, catalog for Johnson and Murphy. So I've been looking into the Handmade 100s line. They retailed for $1,000 in 1992, which would cost you around $2,000 today. So these were not a cheap shoe at all. Uh, the Imperials cost about, uh, you know, in today's terms would be around 350 bucks. These were not a cheap shoe. Um, there was a couple of models. There was the Regency, which is this model. There was the Envoy, the Ambassador, which was a cap toe, and the Envoy was a brown wingtip, okay? So I looked up the codes. It's pretty funny. Let's, uh... oh yeah, I got an advertisement. I looked up the codes, and um, it was $1,000. Here's the catalog. Let me find it here real quick. It's incredible that they cost this much money. And you'll see why in a minute. They're unbelievable. Where's the page with all the prices? I think it's this this is a really cool catalog though. He has everything cataloged from the shoes. They had golf shoes. They had pretty much anything you could imagine. Um so they had the handmade 100s line, Crown Aristocraft, Aristocraft, and then the Connoisseur collection and the Heritage collection and the Hartford collection, the Cavalli collection. There was just a bunch of stuff. Where are the prices? I saw it here the other day. Here we go. Let's see, here we go. I looked at the codes, 245527, and that is the Regency, which is pretty insane that it cost that much. 
thousand dollars. Interesting, huh? That's just how it goes, I guess. All right, yep, I'm opening the box right now. So I'm gonna be taking my time and I'm gonna open the box just for those who wanna see everything on it. It's ripped here, the shoe with the memory. I, don't, I can't read the whole thing, okay? So unfortunately that's how it goes. So the, the box had a really nice velvet interior. Pretty nice little shoestring here to tie it together. Unmistakably Johnson and Murphy, a heritage of excellence since 1850. So I did mention they were worn by um, Abraham Lincoln. It's very historic. Craftsmanship has been the hallmark of Johnson and Murphy shoes for over 130 years, ever since the first 30 highly trained shoemakers from North Northampton, England, began producing fine shoes at the American factory. This heritage of superior skills has been passed down through the generations. Today, Johnson and Murphy shoes still reflect the pride and talents of these master craftsmen. It's heartbreaking to read this because you know that that heritage is lost and the, the craft has been lost. Johnson and Murphy quality is recognizable at a glance, but a brief examination is even more impressive. The exceptionally fine materials, the matchless workmanship, and the refinements that reflect the handwork required in this manufacturer. We know you will enjoy the comfort and the quality of your new pair of Johnson and Murphy shoes. William Dragon. His last name was Dragon. Straight up. William Dragon Jr., President. So, this is, are some tips for leather care. Always store leather shoes with shoe trees. That's a common one you hear from me. <laughs> Always keep shoes away from direct heat. Use a shoehorn. Give shoes rest between wear. Polish shoes with high quality pastry cream. Heartbreaking to read, I'm telling you right now. Is Carmina? Yeah, by Alabadejo, the same as Carmina. Yes, it's the same Alabadejo family, Carmina. And they're also in Mere Men, but they're not connected, but they, they are run by the same family. All right. Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't know why the, the quality of the audio is so low. Let me see if I can't turn it up. Um, I hope that's better. I don't know if um, that's it. Can, I hope you can hear me a lot better now. But uh, yeah, so it's just some leather care here. All right. So the shoes actually came... With only one shoe bag, this drives me nuts. It's not Johnson & Murphy's fault. I guess the, the original shoe bag was lost. That's just how it goes. Okay, so let's pull this shoe out without further ado. There we go. That is the Regency. Okay. It smells like an old bookstore. That vintage smell. It's pretty interesting. All right. Yes, it is a spade sole. So, if you've watched my channel enough, you'll know I love spade soles. Essentially, the edge is cut really close to the to the waist, and then it flares out, and you get the spade, which is like a shovel. And it cuts down here, and then there's like a sharp right there. A sharp front. Let me see if I have another spade sole here. Oh, you guys know I love spade soles. USL right here. Here's another spade sole. So these are made by USL. I do have a review online here on YouTube. This is a spade sole, right? This one is far more pronounced. This is a true spade. This is more subdued, but still a spade sole and looks quite beautiful. And then this one I had done by Steve at Beto's Leatherworks. Is these are Allen Edmonds, but he did a spade sole. This one's very subdued. So that's essentially what you're getting with a spade sole. This is a very high-end detail. You don't see spade soles very often anymore, and companies that do produce them cost a lot of money. So to see the original spade sole that you would get from shoes in the 1920s, 30s, 40s, all the way to the 90s is just really historic. And to get them in unworn condition is even more rare. So I'm just just really, really happy with them. I'm telling you right now, I'm really, really happy. Uh, you can see, or even from the laces, we're getting a resurgence in the dress shoe world, the, the, the 
the dress shoe world, people are going back to flat laces. Um, High-end shoemakers do flat laces. These are just, you know, what was standard back in the day. So this is really, in my opinion, the greatest, best shoe made in the United States ever. And I've looked a lot at shoes made here, vintage, and the, the Regency, the handmade 100 lines was just the best in my estimation. These are Johnson & Murphy. Um, the tan ones, these are Allen Edmonds. These are the Strand, but Steve from Beto's Leatherworks upgraded them. So, Mario, unfortunately, these do not fit because they are not my size. As, as a collector, I just had to find, you know, a model, period. So what model? These are 10 and a half C, which means they are more narrow than a standard D width. So I'm sure somebody on the pla on planet Earth could uh, could wear them. My What I'm going to do is preserve them and just keep them behind glass. I have a glass case where I keep shoes that I really enjoy. I, I really feel this shoe has to be preserved because they are extremely rare. Uh, you don't even find them for sale on eBay or anywhere for that matter. So um, I don't want this shoe or this sample just to disappear. Unfortunately, I know that sucks, but that's just the way it is. So let's look at the shoe in detail. This is obviously a wingtip Oxford. This is just pretty much common knowledge. My favorite thing about Johnson & Murphy is their swan neck design, which looks like a swan's neck, and this is just really, really beautiful. It gives it such a robust and strong look. Oh, man, one of my favorites. So uh, I do look for this on modern shoes, and very few companies do it, but I just absolutely love the swan neck. Um, toe medallion is very nice, and I just think it's really, really beautiful. I like the proportions of the shoe. Um, not too long, not too stubby. And that spade really just gives it that beautiful, beautiful shape. Alrighty, yeah, I am an, I'm a shoe hunter for sure. This is just what I've I've been up to. Um, the first real dress shoe I ever bought before Allen Edmonds was a pair of wingtips by Johnson and Murphy that were black, just like these, but just the normal line. And I remember the tongue was always sewed in on the side. These are the same way, so <laughs> I'm pretty happy to see that. Um, let me just look at the upper here real quick to see if there's anything else I see that I like. Um, we've got a seamless heel right there. Well, it's not, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's still, you know, a wingtip Oxford and there's, it's a smaller piece of leather, but it's constructed without a seam on the heel. Um, that is a, an aspect of high-end shoemaking that I like to see. So I'm, I'm glad to see a, a seamless heel for sure. Florsheim Imperial, Alex, yeah, I, I just showed one off in today's video. That's it right there. This one's Shell Cordovan. I've worn it a couple times. I wore it for the first time to a funeral. Oh, a little table. Okay, so uh, even the insole looks really beautiful. Let me look at the insole here. It's, it's got that... Um, there's the insole. You can see... Let's see if you can see it on camera here. That's the insole. It has the Johnson and Murphy logo. Believe it or not, this inspired. I was inspired. The Ellie and Oxford logo is a is is a a coat of arms just like Johnson and Murphy's. It's a crown and two animals on the side, two lions. So that that's how you know Alan Edmonds. I mean, uh, the Ellie and Oxford was inspired by this shoe. This is just the shoe I've been looking for for that long. So when I was doing the Elegant Oxford, I thought, man, I just need a logo. I thought a coat of arms, and I've always loved since this shoe was essentially just had disappeared and no one. Would ever see it again i just wanted that that crown with two lines on the side it says johnson murphy a shoe made with memory a shoe with a memory made in the usa aristocraft handmade okay very cool so uh handmade obviously denotes at this level is hand welted and hand um hand lasted so this is that's a pretty big deal shoes today are not hand welted for the most part if you look at Allen Edmonds Alden Carmina pretty much all the, the big players they're just good you're welted not just good good you're welted's fine hand welted is the next level where the edge the sole and the upper are welted by hand you know so it's it's high-end level shoemaking hand lasted even better the last is made by hand and the shoe is really handmade so truly next level shoemaking makes me very, very happy to see. I'm just looking at the small details here. This is incredible work. I just can't even tell you. 
the welt fudging is perfect. The stitches per inch are just absolutely insane. I've never seen anything like this before. It's truly, truly high-end work. Uh, very, very nice. Uh, haven't seen anything like this in person before, to be honest with you. And I've looked at a lot of shoes in my day. I've, uh, I mean, there's definitely some bias because I love this shoe a lot, but I've looked at a lot of shoes uh, as the Elegant Oxford here reviewing shoes, and this is for sure probably the best shoe I've ever held in my hand. It just You can just feel the quality from touching it. It's insane how it feels in the hand. It really does feel amazing. Okay, so let's keep looking. Everything else, edges look very nice. Everything looks fantastic. Let's look at the bottom. So, um, not a beveled waist. I think it's probably my only complaint about <laughs> this shoe. Not that it really makes a difference, but in high, the highest end shoemaking, you have fiddleback waists or beveled waists. You know, if there's a, a, either a, an extreme aggressive cut or it's rounded off. Not a big deal, obviously, um, but I do like beveled waists. So this is just nice closed channel stitching. Another hallmark of quality shoemaking. The sole is lifted up, they do the stitching, and then it's, you know, closed back on top. You can see where it was closed back right here. It's probably because the shoe is just old, the leather, the quality is just falling apart but obviously handmade. Uh, the heel is high quality. We got some nails in here, which you do not see anymore. Shoes no, really don't use nails on their heels anymore. They use rubber, quarter, dove, dovetails. This is just beautiful work right here. So I'm very, very happy. Man, this is, I like the cuts here. Very cool. Yeah. Close up, let's see how close I can get. How's that? There we go. That looks a lot better. I'm looking at the camera now. All right, how's that? Let me just pan very, very slowly from the beginning so you can see it. Very nice, there we go. Let's turn it around. All righty, there's that spade sole. There is, and that is, the inside right there. It's very, very happy with this, to be honest with you. Man, it's truly something else. I'm so happy to just even hold these. I've just been looking for such a long time. They do have a brown version I've seen only online. Um, didn't have a spade sole though. It was a more subdued but um, yeah, it was the brown calf, the one that I saw online. So I'm just looking at it. Everything seems to be well made. Yeah. I'm happy to see them in this shape though. This, I assume this one's from 1999 and not 92 because this one has the newer logo. The one in 92 had a big logo and then less writing. So that's probably yeah, I'm assuming these are 99, but still 25 years old and never worn. No, uh, Mark, they, uh, Mark, these actually came that way from the factory. These are a vintage pair of handmade 100s by Johnson and Murphy. So this is a very rare find. So these are the Regency by Johnson and Murphy. They no longer make them. Santiago, I know you guys are probably just tuning in. They no longer make them out of production. Johnson & Murphy no longer makes it, so. All right, very happy with them. Let me grab a shoe tree. Let's see what we're gonna do here. Okay, very good. I am gonna shine them today, which I'm not worried about. One second. How's the mailman? <laughs> He's a great guy. All right. Where's the other shoe tree? Oh, where did I put that darn thing? 
Yeah, I'm gonna shine them today. Uh, just one of them. The other one I'm actually doing, I'm actually shining for the reviews, the review series video. God, I almost don't wanna shine them, but I wanna take care of them. It's kind of funny. Alrighty, where's the uh, brush? There it is. There's like red powder all over them from the, from the box. So I'm gonna make sure I get it all off. It's everywhere. Alrighty, I'm looking at it here. Happy with it. Okay. What do we got? Um, let me grab some black polish there. There's a little area here I want to make sure it gets proper treatment. Where's my black? Um, is it already? Never thought I'd have this problem. Here it is. There's a little spot here I don't like. Alrighty. So there we go. Just there was a little skid mark, a little brown, a little skid mark right there. I'm always um, looking for estate sales and hoping one day I'll find another one of these. It's kind of funny. Maybe someone has a pair and never wore them <laughs> and passed away. This is, I'm assuming that's probably what happened with these. Especially gentlemen who had a lot of shoes. Some guys have so many shoes they can never wear them. Everything else looks fine. There are little dings here and there. But... I'm just really, really happy I found these. Gloss. Alrighty. Sam, how much on Amazon? Are you talking about Saphir? Uh, depends. You just look up Saphir on Amazon, but the shoes are definitely not going to be on Amazon. If that's what you're referring to. So, let's see anything else I'm seeing here. I've looked these shoes over a lot, but pretty funny. All right. Well, sorry if you hear a loud noise. It's the uh, trash truck driving around. They drive around on Fridays. I keep forgetting. So we're using some mirror gloss just to prep the area. All right. I love the toe shape. The last is just really beautiful. It's kind of have this dip and then it goes up and down. It's very nice. Sam, they are Johnson and Murphy from the Handmade 100 line. The model is called the Re. So if you want to.
want to watch the live stream from the beginning, you'll be able to see all that information. Let's get some of this Marigloss on here. Just a little bit on the sides. A little bit right here, not too much though. What do we got here? Looks like factory glue of some kind. Well, whatever, gotta be focusing on the toe. Yep. Right there. Even the stitching is amazing. I'm looking at the stitching, it's so tight. It's really fantastic. Everything here is just well made. It's too bad Johnson Murphy no longer makes anything like this. Hopefully one day they'll, uh, well, it's just wishful thinking. They're not going to go back to it ever, but it's nice to dream. And um, there is a company that is trying to reproduce this look. They used to be called Ace of Spades. I don't know what the name is called now, but it's owned by Anders. He, gosh, I forgot the last name. He does videos for Artiton in London. He has a company that does spade soles, if you guys are interested in spade soles. So it's just an FYI. I know this people some people love the style a lot and they look for shoemakers that make recreate this kind of stuff. Anders definitely does it. So it's like factory glue, yeah. This is stuff. How much are they worth? Well, Mark, they were made in America, uh, Mark Rollins. They were made in the USA and by Johnson & Murphy. So this was one of the last made in America treasures before everyone switched over across the sea. And although Allen Edmonds and Alden still make their shoes here, they're not anywhere near this quality. This is just handmade, handmade and really, really high end. How much are they worth, Mark? to D2. <laughs> well, they cost $1,000 in 1999. And I did a calculator on inflation and it said that by today in 2025, 2024, they'd be worth $2,120. So around the, around the cost of a pair of Yohai Fukuda, right? So a little expensive, to be honest, 2000 is a lot. You could probably get a shoe this good, uh, today for 1500 maybe uh, from the right shoemaker but not in the US it'd have to be somewhere from uh, probably Asia in the Asias they they do kind of, they do this kind of work like ESL very comparable for a lot less it's just essentially what it comes down to okay Royal Spades Philip no, they were. It was called Ace of Spades, but uh, Anders changed the name of the company. I don't know what it's called now, but yes, that's. I think Royal Spades might be what you might be referring to. Okay, let's get these shined up. Not using navy today. Going with classic black. Hope these shine quickly. These might give me trouble, these might not. It really just depends on the shoe. It's so funny how some shoes really shine quickly, some give you. If they have a toe medallion, they can be harder to shine just because there's literal holes in the leather um, that prevent the wax from glassing over. That can happen. But let's see how we're how we're doing here with this shoe. My little water jar broke. Hurry up. Get some water out. I need that water. There we go. Okay. It's shining pretty quickly. Maybe the shoe is my lucky shoe.
looks like I got a little bit of factory glue on there. It looked like a little dot, but as soon as I scraped it off, it started smearing. I'll get it off in a sec. Solvents in the Patelux seem to be working. Anyways, just find a better angle. Filming and shining can be a real challenge. <laughs> uh oh, don't want to knock over this. I bought a new light, by the way, because the old one cracked during the other live stream that it, uh, I was with Levi. And I stood up, bumped it over, and the, the whole thing cracked, and I had to throw it out. So I bought a new one, which is much better. You can change the temperature of the light bulb. It's just much, much better overall. Makes me very happy, but I don't want to break this one, so. This little area is still giving me trouble. I don't want it to do that though. How's it looking? Okay, it's starting to shine. Makes me happy. Making me happy. Let's get a little bit more wax on there. This way. Let's get another layer on there. It is shining, but it's, I can tell the wax is not connecting like I want it to connect, so. If you get holes in your broguing, by the way, just use a brush and stipple them out. It's very quick and easy. You don't have to use like a toothpick or nothing like that. I know people have resorted to toothpicks, but you don't have to do that. We talked about that in a previous live stream, just, just FYI, if you get any. All right, just give it a couple more. Make sure it's drying. You can tell it's kind of ready when it starts to shine just by dragging your finger across. It doesn't look like it's ready yet though. You know what I should have done? I should have gone online and found like a 1930s tin of kiwi, <laughs> shined them with that just to keep it 100% traditional, but I didn't think about that. That would have been fun. Give it a sec, gotta get that wax to dry a little bit. And then we should be getting a much better shine. Yeah, these brogues, the broguing is, is what's causing it to give me a little trouble. Let's see, what do we got, what do we got? Here we go. Gotta find a nice area. Let's try again. Just get that excess off. Let me check my other phone here real quick. All right. All right. 
Here we go. It's feeling silky smooth. I'm feeling a little resistant, silky smooth, though. Silky smooth, silky smooth. It's trying to feel the friction, so let's get some more wax on there. Hmm. This shoe is definitely giving me a little trouble. I can feel it not wanting to shine. Especially here in the front area. Okay, maybe we're getting a little bit. It's, it's, it's working. Come on, pull through. Start shining. I'm seeing a shine develop. It's just uh, not as fast as I want. Let's just make sure that. Let me just see. Make sure that we're getting every area we can. Drop of water. There we go. Ooh. This shoe is fighting me a little bit. Not cooperating. Let's do a little shining here. I'm sure this area is gonna shine much faster just because there's no broguing. Ooh, my arm's getting tired. Ah. Don't want to add too much wax or it's going to plug up these holes. These brogues, these broguing holes. I guess that's what they're called. Broguing holes, brogues. The toe medallion's going to get clogged up. I don't want to do that. So I have to just go little by little. That's kind of how it goes when you're shining a shoe with the toe medallion. Can be frustrating at first but once it starts to build up nice you'll start to see it just give it a second here to try look see what the heck am i watching you're watching shoe shining it's a very varied world and there's a lot of niche hobbies out there and one of them is shoe shining men's shoes men's reviews all that so I hope you enjoy it, just even if you're not really about it. Hope you can watch it and appreciate it for what it is. Um, it's funny, when I tell people there is a World Shoe Shine Championship, they don't believe it. They're like, really? I'm like, yeah. People come together and sh there's so much about the art that there's a, sh a World Shoe Shine Championship. It's pretty interesting. Are we getting there? Yeah, I'm, I'm seeing a shine pull up. See, I'm seeing a shine. There is a shine. Do I do you laugh in the face of your enemies? Um, if I had any, I would. I promise. So that's it. We're looking okay. If I had any enemies, I would. I hope I don't have any enemies, but can't please everyone, I guess. Someone's eventually gonna not like you. You gotta just stand for what you believe. And I believe shining shoes is my calling, so I'm going to keep shining. Yeah, this shoe is definitely giving me a little bit of trouble, but it's because the area, the toe is very small, the toe area is small. There's broguing. That's a perfect storm, all, all things combined. It'll make shining the shoe just that much harder. Oh, come on, don't let me down. Let me uh, switch to a, a nice...
clean part of the of the shine cloth. This shine cloth needs to be washed. I've used it a lot recently and I have not cleaned it, so that may be my fault. Here, yep, I think I found one. Too much moisture and you're gonna have another problem so try to get as much as you can off nice and silky smooth oh, a little bit too much don't want that much silky smooth silky smooth just touch the wax just touch it just touch the wax here we go okay I hope that worked I feel what I needed. Give the wax a second. No, please don't start hazing on me. If it starts to haze, I might be in trouble. Okay, give it a second. Man! Thanks, Timeless. I appreciate it. Alan Edmonds is my first love, and I just... I wear them all the time, believe it or not. I just love them. And uh, I love the way they, their design is just, I just love the way it looks, to be honest, they, the way Alan Edmonds look. The Strand is just one of my favorite looking shoes of all time. Alrighty, buddy. Hurry up and shine so I don't look like I know, so I look like I know what I'm doing here. All right, just give it a sec. <laughs> The shoes flying everywhere. Sometimes the wax needs to sit for a sec so that it can dry. And then it'll shine. Is that what's happening right now? Is that what's happening right now? I think that's what's happening right now. I think I just got very lucky. Okay, give it a sec. Give it a little sec. Alright. Let it dry. Alright, let's get back to it. Hopefully that'll be what I need. Alrighty, I think. We're looking good. Toe area, front area. Let's get that front area. This is definitely a tougher shoe to shine. It's um, giving me a little bit of a problem. Oh, get some moisture on there. One second. Give it. Get the wax a little bit to settle. Sometimes, if you don't let the solvents dry. It'll just keep swirling on you and it won't harden. So I'm getting a little swirling here, but the front looks much better. Okay, just a little better touch. Oh boy, I'm losing patience. It's looking, you know, one last ditch effort, okay? I'm gonna try one last thing. I'm gonna bust out the purple cloth. The purple cloth was given to me by Jason Dornstar, who is another shiner, who got this rag from Ash of Mason and Smith, who is the world, who was the world shoe shine champion. Ash is just 
the most incredible shiner there is there is i think in my opinion so if he knows what he's doing maybe he knows what he's doing I'll, I'll learn from from the master from ash let's see if the purple rag works this is red jason gave me a purple one though see if it's enough it's very it feels like felt that's the thing i don't like it because it feels like felt but sometimes those little hairs heat up the wax perfectly and you end up getting a really nice shine. <sighs> Knowing my luck, this is gonna work. Maybe, maybe not. Let's see, too much moisture on there. Just touch the wax. These brogues are, I can feel the brogues, like, I can feel the medallion scraping against my rag. They're kind of lifted up, that's my only problem. Oh, come on, come on. Start glassing. It's not glassing over, it's driving me nuts. Johnny, if you learn to shine in the military, you probably do know what you're doing. I just use a lot of things that help me do it better. But uh, you just water and wax is all you really need. I just make it more complicated, really. But you're, you probably know what you're doing. I'm going to be honest. No, the purple rag's not working for me. These brogues are just... It feels really good here. As soon as I go over the, the medallion area, it starts to, the little fuzzies start to scrape. So no, that's not working for me either. Let's add a couple of more layers. And then it's going to work. I have a feeling. I have a good feeling about this. Let's, let's do some Pat Deluxe for a change and then some Miracle Floss. Should work. Okay. I hope this works. I have a feeling it will, though. This is an this this shoe is an elegant Oxford. So it really is an elegant Oxford. Get off that excess moisture. I really hope this one works. <laughs> I want to impress everybody and actually get these shined. Even though you guys have seen me shine a million shoes in the past. Once I actually do the YouTube video, these are going to be like 100%. I'm just really excited to do that. But right now... Alrighty, come on, come on, come on, come on. Smooth, 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 smooth. I'm feeling that smooth, nice sensation. I'm feeling some friction. Alrighty. Touch the wax. Oh, is this going to work? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Start to glass. Just need that wax to glass over. And then I'll be set. Okay, this is actually working okay. I'm, I'm happy with what I see. Just needed more wax, I guess. If the wax doesn't connect on you, like glass over, and it, it's made worse with, with the medallion, 
But if it doesn't glass over on you, it won't shine. That's kind of where you need to get to the point where the pores are all filled in and then the glass, the wax connects and then starts to glass. That's kind of what you want to get to. Holding it here is just really tiring. But I do feel a lot smoother of a sensation in my fingers. So I think we are getting there. Definitely getting there. Hey, death to, we death to weebs. <laughs> Finally caught a live stream. Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. I really do. Alrighty, I think we're looking okay. Telling you, this medallion is really fighting me. The wax essentially just doesn't know the difference between a medallion and a leather pour that hasn't been filled all the way. So it just doesn't know better and then boom, no shine. <gasps> okay, I'm feeling a lot smoother of a of a sensation. It's glassing over. I'm feeling it. Now we go over time with the heat and the pressure. This is kind of where you want to get to. Sometimes it just takes a minute or 20 for you to get that sensation, but I'm feeling the glass right now. I'm in the zone. I'm feeling that smooth, glassy feeling. So I'm just going to run with it and really start applying the pressure. No longer am I acting like it's an eggshell. Right now I'm acting like it's, like I'm cleaning glass with Windex, okay? You're having a little pressure. Oh, I don't want to lose this momentum I got going. And I think we got something that looks a lot better right there. Oh, so that is probably what I'm going to be working with today. Look at that. Not perfect at all. I'm going to keep shining them, but I'm happy with it. Uh, Michael, love your work. Could it make more sense to use Pat Deluxe before or after the mirror gloss? So mirror gloss should be used first. It shines much faster, but it's harder to spread. So I use Pat Deluxe to help make it more spreadable. Uh, but yeah, if you just use Mirror Gloss, it should be fine. And then Pat Deluxe after. Sometimes I mix them. I haven't noticed a huge difference. Um, but, you know, that I mean, a huge difference between using a little bit of Pat Deluxe with your Mirror Gloss. Do you strip new shoes before you shine them? No, not usually. I do on some pairs for certain reasons. But no, not usually. Um... It depends on the color of the shoe. Sometimes the finish is ruined. Like a, a, someone will send me a pair of Allen Edmonds and the finish is ruined, so I'll strip it off. Um, or if they have a walnut shoe, like these Allen Edmonds strands, but the finish is too dark. Some people have a really dark walnut. I'll strip them down so that they can get a lighter shade. But for the most part, no, I don't strip shoes down. Um, it's only for certain cases like, you know, certain jobs. I'm feeling a nice glossy feeling though, so I think the shoe finally got to where I wanted it to get. It was not glossing over until I just added more wax. Sometimes that's all it takes is a little bit more wax. Let's compare them. I hope there's an actual difference in the look or I'm going to look like an idiot. So, does it look much different? No. But is there a real difference? <laughs> yeah. This toe just looks a little bit rougher. Not as shined. These are actually shined. Right. And they will be shined even more. Is Reno Matte what you should use to take off the factory finish from Alden or Allen Edmonds? No, Reno Matte is not strong enough. Reno Matte is used to remove old polish. Although sometimes, if the finish is iffy, it'll come off with it. But if you really want to remove a finish, you have to use acetone, not nail polish remover. It has to be 100% acetone from like Home Depot, 
that'll get it off, but I don't recommend doing that unless you know what you're doing. You might ruin your shoes. Uh, Marcio, top. I hope that means, like, top work. <laughs> but yeah, let me uh, go back around. Let me just look at it through what you're seeing in the camera. There we go. There's a little bit of a shine there. And look at that spade sole, man. Makes me very happy to see. Let's see what you... Just looks really beautiful. Okay, and then that's the unshined one. All right. We're at an hour, guys. So I think this is it for today's live stream. Uh, thanks for watching and thanks for helping, you know, watching and uh, enjoying this unboxing of the Johnson & Murphy handmade 100s this is the regency uh last made in 99 so it's a rare shoe now and if you ever see any on ebay make sure to send me a message and i'll scoop them up or you can scoop them up whatever <laughs> uh johnny thanks i appreciate you stopping by everyone have a great weekend enjoy your friday this is my favorite day of the week i love friday because i still get saturday Sunday's just super busy, and then there's Monday afterwards. So enjoy your Friday. Have a great one, and I will see you next Friday with another live stream. I have a smooth Cayman Belly boot. Shines up nicely with Lincoln. Yeah, Lincoln's one of the other big brands in the United States. Uh, Kiwi did go out of business, last I heard, so we're not going to see it forever. Uh, but Lincoln's another quality. So is Angelus, stuff like that. Okay. All righty, everyone. Have a great one, and I will see you next Friday. Uh, if you need anything, please email me at theelegantoxford at gmail.com. Visit theelegantoxford.com for all of your Saphir and shoe care needs. If you'd like a commission, a patina job, please email me. I don't take commissions on the website since I'm a one-man show. I do those case by case. Okay, have a great one.